hello. We're totally doing something that Garrett's like, this is not on the plan. Come back here. Um, I would like to see my notes right here. It says H B G. Okay. Happy birthday, Gareth. Oh. Oh, <laughs> so you. we have um, a little <laughs> nice hat for you. And he didn't know. It's we tried. My party hat. It's very difficult to try and keep secrets from um, him. So yeah, we had to try and hide the slide so he couldn't see it. I had a couple <laughs> of text messages. I'm like, don't look at that. I was on, came on my computer. So we would like to wish you a very happy birthday. That his, is very sweet. His birthday's you. on Thursday. So wow. we love you and you are an amazing person mm. and you love wow. people, right? Yes, we all know that um, Gareth gives his life for people mm. to serve the Lord and to serve you and to serve us. So we're appreciative of you and we are, um, I love you. Love you so, so much. I would kiss you, but I got red lipstick on. Do you That's want so some? No, no, no. Okay. I'll, just, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do that later. <laughs> Well, that's right. really, really yes. sweet of you. Happy Thank birthday. you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I love being impromptu and doing all sorts of stuff that are not planned. So, as you know, I think I knocked over a cup last week or the week before. So, live is fun. Yes, it is definitely fun. Well, I'm going to pray and then we're going to get started. So, Laura, we thank you for this morning, for your word. Lord, as we share. Um, some cool things and some exciting things. I pray that our hearts will be opened, that they will be excited, and that you will speak to us, Lord, as we um, dive into your word and we uh, search the scriptures and talk about some great things. So we open our hearts to receive from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So you get a special treat today because for those of you who watched last week, um, I did a part one of a message. And what I'm going to do this week is I have two messages that I'm speaking. Okay, just calm down. Not right now. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm actually doing four. No, just kidding. Okay, so what's happening is that um, I have a message that I'm going to share to you that's different today. And then the second part of last week, we're going to send that out to you via email. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to take a drink. So cheers. Um, so look, make sure you look in your email at the Rock Seal Beach in the next little bit, probably this week. Um, and if, you do, if you're not a part of our email, um, make sure that you email us and let us know. So you can email us at Seal Beach at Solid Lives and you can tell us, hey, can I be a part of the email so I can get that second message? And then we will post it as well. So it'll be on YouTube. So you're going to get that a special treat. Two messages this week. So um, the reason is, is I, we have a exciting um, venture that we're all going on. You know, I don't know um, about you. I'm assuming most of you have probably been to Disneyland at least once, once in your life. And so how does it sort of work? You get in there, you spend all that money, right? A lot of money. You get in there, you grab your map right? You take the map and then you kind of shuffle everybody over to the side and then you gather around the map and then you have a plan for the day. Where are we going? Because you invest all this money, you invest all this time, you want to make sure you get the most for what your investment is, right? So you grab that map and then you start out. Okay, where do we want to go? Do we want to start out at Adventureland and work our way over to Galaxy's Edge or where are we going to go? So today the message that I have for you is we're going to go to the side, we're going to grab a map. We're going to grab the plan of what God's calling the rock and where we're going. We have a plan and we want to share it with you where we're going and what's happening, right? Sometimes we're like, what's the plan? What's going on? Where are we going? What's happening? Well, we're going to share that this morning. So this is going to be a pull over to the side and we're going to open this map up and we're going to share uh, what God is doing in the rock and where we're going. Okay. So Buckle up and get ready. This is the adventure. So today we're going to be at Adventureland. That's where we're going. We're going on an adventure. And then next week, Gareth uh, might take you to Galaxy's Edge. I don't know. I don't know where he's going to take you. It may be, you know, one of the other places. But anyway, uh, it's going to be good. So um, let's do this. Are you guys ready? So where is the rock going and what's the plan? Well, let me tell you. One thing that we know um, is that God 
never changes. He never changes, right? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that's one thing we know. God never changes, but his, um, and his purposes never change either. And I'm going to talk to you about what God's purposes are. Um, but sometimes the methods change. The way that he wants his purposes to be carried out, those can change. And so let me show you some examples of how God did that. Um, you know, there's a story in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 5, and I'm going to read it to you, where David um, is battling with the Philistines. And so he inquires of the Lord and the Lord tells him what to do. So let's look at verse 18. And it says, the Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord. That is like a life verse for me. That is like a life thing. So David inquired of the Lord. You know, so many times we have all these different things going around, but what do we do? We just try to make, we try to figure it out. We try to work it out. We go to Google and we look at how they're doing, go to our friends and we, you know, no, no, we need to inquire of the Lord when we have uh, something ahead of us that we need to make a decision about. And so David did that. He inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? And the Lord said to David, go up. For I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hands. So he says, yes. Should I do this? Yes. Go ahead and do this. Um, So David went to Baal Parazim and David defeated them. So he asked what to do. God told him what to do. He did it and he was successful. Listen, that is a life plan for you. Go to the Lord. Ask him what to do. Wait till you hear it and then execute, then obey and do it, and you'll see victory in your life. So then, in the same, literally the same chapter, chapter 5, 2 Samuel, listen to what happens here. Um, We're going to look at verse 22. Then the Philistines went up once again. So David, um, you know, kind of spanked their bahooties a bit there and had a victory. And so then the Philistines gathered again. They're like, come on, we're going to go back and get him. So once again, um, deployed them in the valley of Rephaim. So now they're in battle two. And so what happens? Therefore, David, what? Just did what he did the last time? Said, well, God told me what to do it, so we know what to do. Let's go do it again. No, he went back to the Lord again. Lord, what do I do this time? It says he inquired of the Lord. And he said, you shall not go up. So first he said, go up. Now he's saying, no, don't do that. So imagine that if he just did what he did last time, right? No, that's not what happened. It says, you shall not go up. Circle around behind them and come up upon them in front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly. For then the Lord will go out before you and uh, before you to strike the camp. I love that. The Lord will go out before you. You know, so many times we think that it has to be, it's all the pressure is on us. We got to figure it out. We got to make it happen. We got to do it. No, no, no. The Lord, if we listen, we inquire and we ask and we obey, he will fight our battles. He will go before us. I'm so grateful for that. That is like... Why do we need to worry? Why do we need to stress? We, we have the Lord. He will go before us. So it says, the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. And David did so as the Lord commanded him. And he drove back the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. So plans change, right? You can see that here. But listen, our commission does not change. And Gareth and I were talking about that word the other day. What is commission? And again, these this is the purpose of God for our life. What is the commission? Well, we know what the great commission. And listen to this word, co-mission. Commission. It's a co-mission. It's you and him on a mission together. So let's look at what Mark says about that. Mark 16. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel, which is the good news to every creature. You know, I have the cutest little puppy dog, and I preach the gospel to him because I want him to go to heaven one day. I don't know if he will, but it says every creature, right? So he's a creature, so I'm just praying he's going to get saved. His name is Cheeky, 
and he is very cheeky. We were talking the other day. He went into the bedroom. He's not allowed in there, and he would not go out. We're like, out, out, and he just sat there and stared at us, and we're like, we should have named him obedient, and maybe that would have changed him. Instead, we call him cheeky, and that's exactly what he is. So it says here, to preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he do, who does not believe will be condemned. God's ultimate purpose is to save the world from eternal hell. And that's what that means. It says, but he who does not believe will, con- will be condemned. You know, God called me at a young age to populate heaven. You know, if you walked up and there was a burning house, like, you know, drove up, there was a burning house, it's in our instinct to want to get out. And and you saw people in there. It's in our instinct to want to help people and to get them out of that burning house. It's in our instinct when God has changed us to be able to get people out of an eternity separated from God. That is the commission that God's called us to as believers, um, and John 3.16, we know what that means, right? Everyone, that's like the one scripture you learn as soon as you go to kids' church. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. His plan is that he gave his son so that we could, we could have another, there's another plan, there's another chance, Right? And so that's what he did. Um, 2 Peter 3, 9 says, the, the Lord is not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want any, not one. doesn't matter if they're mean, if they're, you know, your neighbor that is driving you crazy. No, 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 not even that one. Not even the ones who have been so hurtful to you. None, none. He want, it says that he's not willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the Lord is giving us a new plan, a new plan. But the Great Commission will always be the same. It will always be his purpose. So therefore, our mission will always be the same. And if you know what the rock's mission is, how many of you know it? If you know it, go ahead and say what it is. It's three words. It starts with building, building solid lives. Yes, that is the mission at the rock. Um, And so, again, that will always remain the same. The mission is that. And so we know the scriptures of those of you who have been at the rock for a while. Maybe you haven't. And so here's um, what we believe that that the Lord has called us to. It's Luke 6, 47 to 49. And it says, whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. So whoever comes to me, hears my sayings and does them. Not just comes and hears, but does them. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundations on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not be shaken because it was strong. For it was founded on, let's hear it, the rock. That's right. Um, But he who is heard and does nothing is like a man who built his house on earth and without a foundation, right? That's that's discipleship, the foundations of being strong. These are the things that are important that we believe um, at the rock, which I'm going to go into in a little bit. Uh, Let's see. But he who heard that does did nothing like a man who built his house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. I don't know about you, but I have seen so many people come in, they get excited, they're emotional, and before you know it, the the streams hit, the storms hit, and they're gone. They've just been swept away by it. And that is not what God is calling us as believers. We are called to be strong and planted. And so this uh, scripture is very, um, it's the mission of who we are. Um, Come to Jesus, number one, hear his sayings, read his word, open it up, let it change your life, practice it, and then do what it says. So come, hear, do. Um, So here's what the word of the Lord is right now. This is what the Lord is calling us to as the rock, um, as a whole. And the word is that it's time to plant. It's time to plant. 
So Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 2 says, For everything there is a season, a season, uh, sorry, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest. Now, if you really think about it, okay, it's a time to plant in a worldwide pandemic. Okay, really? Because this really doesn't seem like a good time to do that. This doesn't seem like a good time. And, um, you know, we're going through difficulties economically. A lot of people, um, their jobs, you know, are on hold or they're waiting. There's uncertainty. Um, our nation right now is very divided. We're seeing riots um, and it's uncertain times. So uh, how do we know that it's time to plant? How do we know? Um, you know, a lot of times when people are looking to go somewhere, they can uh, follow the experts, maybe what they're watching on the news. Um, it could be that they're following the crowd. Well, they're saying this, they're doing this, so we're going to go do that too. Uh, maybe your friends, what your friends are saying. Um, it could be that it's because of fear. Fear is pushing us to make decisions or to go a certain direction. Sometimes it can be that um, we're, we're um, pushed by our own comfort zone. You know, this is my comfort zone. I'm going to stay in it. So that's going to dictate how I run my life. Um, and it also could be our emotions, um, you know, our emotional um, the way that we deal with our emotions can also completely dictate to us. You know, we were just um, doing some training yesterday with our son and just talking about our emotions because right now, you know, our emotions can completely overtake us and cause us to be paralyzed, cause us to dictate, you know, uh, just how our day goes. And so, you know, I kind of think of emotions a little bit like our puppy dog, you know, and, you know, we have a dog that lives uh, upstairs to us and um, he does not ever, ever stop barking, like ever. And really it's like they, and, and we'll go outside and they, they don't stop him from barking. So he will walk up to him and it's just, rawr, 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 rawr. I mean, it never stops and you're like, Oh my goodness. And, and they do nothing. Like they literally, they just let this dog do whatever this dog wants to. And it's, it's, it's rude. You know what I mean? Like it's very easy to train your dog to not do that. And there's also bark collars. It doesn't have to be, you know, the kind that you like shock them. That's mean. I don't think that's, but just, it's like it, what it is, is it's literally not disciplining your dog. Like you just let it do whatever it wants. And you know, we, Ha should have control and it's funny because I'm talking about Cheeky and he won't leave we're working on training him right now so we're not letting him be the boss um, and rule our house but we have control over our emotions too you know sometimes we just let our emotions be whatever they want to be you know like I'm going to be this today and my emotion said that so I'm that's what it is you know and the truth is is that we actually have control and should be disciplining our minds and our emotions <clears throat> the same way that we would discipline our children or our puppy dogs or whatever. We don't just let them, oh, well, that's the way they are. Just let them be that way and we'll see what happens. No, no, no. We have a choice how we're going to choose to live our life. You know, the Bible says, and this is kind of what the Lord's been speaking to me. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. In today. In today, I will rejoice in today. Yeah, maybe there's a lot of things swirling around right now in my head and I'm overwhelmed, but today I will rejoice and I will be glad in it because this is the day that the Lord has made. And then when I wake up tomorrow, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna rejoice in this day and all that God's given me. So again, we can allow our emotions to just rule us. But can I encourage you that you take control of your emotions. You get control. You discipline them. You train them on what God's word says. And it's going to make you a happier person. And it's going to make all the people around you happier too. Yeah, do we have bad days? Yeah, do we have struggles? Absolutely. Do we have to just pretend, oh, no, no, I'm good. No, 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 no. If you look at the Psalms, David is very honest about his emotions. He's very honest about how he feels. But he also ends almost every psalm with, but I trust in the Lord, but he is great and he is mighty and he will sustain me and he is my strength and he is my shield. 
And so we can be honest with what's going on, but we need to also train our emotions. Okay, that was for someone in there, not in my notes. So I think maybe somebody, yeah, you, I'm looking at you. You needed to hear that today. So that was for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so God wants to do something and he wants to lead us. So we want to follow his lead, not follow whatever everyone's going. We want to follow his lead. Um, and so that's uh, what we're going to do. And I want to share a uh, passage with you. I love this. This is really, really awesome. And you're going to be blessed by this. So it's in Genesis 26. And we're going to start with verse one. And it says, there was a famine in the land beside, uh, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Okay. So there's a famine. There's no food. Everything's dried up. There's, it, it's, it, can be, it was a scary time. <clears throat> and Isaac went to Abimelech king of the Philistines in Gerar. So Isaac went to the king. And the Lord appeared to him and said, no, do not go to Egypt. Everybody was going to Egypt because that's where all the food was. So that's the natural thing. That's what you do. Okay, there's no food here. It's all being cut off. We don't have anything. We got to go. Everybody's going. We got to go. So he says, no, don't go to the land of Egypt and live in that land of which, and oh, live in the land which I shall tell you. So no, don't do the natural thing, what looks like the right thing to do. You do what I tell you to do, no matter what the circumstances look like. And then it says, dwell in this land, stay here, and I will be with you and bless you. Don't look at your circumstances, do what I ask you to do, no matter how it looks, and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Now let's go to verse 12. <clears throat> it says, then Isaac sowed in that land. He obeyed promptly. He did it. You know what? Maybe he was like, we're going to die here. Are you serious, Lord? Like, have you ever felt like God's asked you to do something in, in the natural? You're like, that's not really, I don't see how that's going to work out, Right. And tithing, that's a good one. That's, well, we are, I don't know. We don't, I don't think we have, well, you know what? The Lord's saying, hey, dwell in land. You trust me. Don't look around. Do what I ask. So it says, dwell in land. I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham. Oh yeah, 12, sorry. Then Isaac sowed in that land. He had prompt obedience. And he reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Obedience is the key to blessing obedience is the key to blessing. He did what looked crazy, right? We're saying, hey, we're, it's time to plant right now in a pandemic. We're, what? Well, if God says it, then we don't need to worry. We just obey and we're going to be good. It says he was, he reaped a hundredfold. It says, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous for obeying God, for obeying God. For he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds, and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. The, that, the Philistines, that's a whole nation. This is one guy that obeyed God, did what God said, and the whole nation envied him. Wow. Can you feel faith rising right now? Can you? I sense when you, when you open the scripture and you read what God has done, faith rises. And so God is asking us to plant. Um, in the normal, it seems like it's the wrong time, but if God said so, then it's done. Amen? So, continuing on with the plan. So, God is saying, I have a new model that's going to work much better in this season, right? We're in a crazy season right now, so the Lord is calling the rock to a new model and so we're going to share that with you. This is called The Plan, and we're going to continue sharing it in the weeks ahead. So this is the first of many weeks so that you know where we're going, what we're doing, what is God saying, and we're going to run, we're going to run with it. So um, the mission, right, of The Rock is building solid lives. So our long-term vision, okay, this is the long-term vision, and most of you know what that is too. It's be fruitful and what? multiply, be fruitful and multiply. So what does that mean? Well, here's what the word fruitful means for our church. What does that look like? It means that we see salvations. We see people getting saved and changed and God doing great things in them and set free. We see baptisms. We see miracle healings. We see God doing um, 
healings in people and seeing people set free. We see people being discipled and new disciples coming. We see an increase in team members and strong teams that people are coming and they're giving of their talents and serving. We also see more people and attendees coming to our church. So multiply, what does that look like for The Rock? Be fruitful and multiply. Multiply means disciples discipling others, not just being a disciple, but then continuing to grow spiritually and discipling other people. It means leaders raising up leaders. So you become a leader. Now you say, hey, you know what? I'm still figuring this out, but I'm, I'm going to lead. Follow me. And now you start training somebody else and replace yourself and put your what you have into someone else. Um, it's also outreach and launching uh, house churches. So outreach and launch, launching house churches. House churches planting new house churches. So again, this is the multiplication side. And, um, and there could be movements. There may be a house church and there's someone in there that God calls and they can birth their own movement. This is what multiplication looks like. So uh, it's good and it's exciting what God's doing as we lay this out. So short term, that's long term. Now let's look at what the short term vision is. I love this. This is neat. So plan as many house churches as possible and then implement the outreach and the multiplication plan. So we have the, the long term and the short term. How are we going to do this? Um, can I just say and ask you, uh, Rock Seal Beach, will you take some time and just open your hands and your heart and just ask the Lord, Lord, are you calling me to open a house church? Are you calling me to lead a house church? Are you calling me to go to a house church? Maybe there's ministry in you that's been sitting dormant and maybe you haven't had the opportunity to do that. Maybe there's neighbors around that need a place to go um, that, that need you, that need you to lead them and to shepherd them and to love them. And maybe the Lord wants to push you into an uncomfortable place. Um, and so I just want to ask you, just take some time and pray, Lord, is this something that you're calling me to? And see what God says. Because again, we want to always inquire of the Lord, inquire of the Lord. And we may have inquired six months ago or three months ago, but continue to inquire of the Lord. Maybe the Lord might say something different. So I want you to pray about that and listen to the Lord. So here is the updated ministry model. This is so cool. Three things. Number one, gather. Two, grow. And three, go. So what's number one? Gather. Second one is grow and go. So look to the person next to you and say, gather, grow, go. Grow, go, 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 grow. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you what that means. So gather, okay? Again, this is what God is doing, where he's taking us as a church. Gather. So we're going to be gathering through services and through fellowship. And Hebrews 10, 25 says, And let us not neglect meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is nearing. So services and fellowship is key. That is the gather part. We want to gather. We want to get together. We want to gather. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that in homes, through home, through house churches, and also on campuses as we are able to um, open up. There's going to be both. Um, which will be great. So then also this is the gathering is primarily for believers. We want to gather together. We want to get strong. We want to get filled up. And then we want to, um, the, the end result is the go. So we're going to gather. And then the last one is, um, it's also divine, a dis, design, sorry, for to multiply. So that's what the gather part is. So services and fellowship. Number two, grow. So we want to gather, but we need to grow. We need to strengthen. We need to be strong. So growing is discipleship. So discipleship is a huge part, as you know, of who we are um, at the rock. And so what does the Bible say about that? Matthew 28, 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is the great co-mission that we are called to not only become disciples, but then make disciples. And so how do we do that? We do that through um, daily disciplines 
of reading the Bible, doing our soap journaling, uh, listening to the Lord, prayer. Um, we do it through OSL discipleship, which many of you have already done. Um, OSL is called, uh, uh, the OSL means Operation Solid Lives. And so again, as the rock, we're called to build solid lives. So this is Operation Solid Lives. We want to get people solid so that they're not whisked away when hard times come. And then the last thing is that we're also going to be doing the, the grow part of discipleship through life and family courses, which we're going to be talking about in the weeks uh, coming of what that will look like. Are you guys excited? I think you are. I can see some excitement out there going, ooh, this sounds pretty exciting. So it is. Um, and then the last one is go. You know, again, if you keep feeding yourself and feeding yourself and feeding yourself, but you're not um, and you're just sitting there, you just get puffed up and puffed up and puffed up. We're not meant to do that. We're meant to, I just heard someone go, ouch. <laughs> we are meant to, you know what, fu what food is for? It's for fuel. Yes. Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors. It's for fuel. That's why we go there. No, not really. But that's why, I mean, really, that's what we're supposed to do, right? So why do we disciple ourselves? For fuel, so that we can go out and change our world, so that we can fill, fulfill the Great Commission. So this is the next part, go. Evangelism and ministry. So Mark 16, 15 says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news, to every creature. And I know you're thinking about my dog right now, but that's not what it means to every creature, to every human. Everyone deserves a chance to hear the good news and be changed and set free and transformed by God. And you know who he's going to do that with? He's not, it's not just going to come down. No, he uses us. He uses you and me to make that happen. So what does that look like? Mobilizing all believers to action. You know, you were given specific gifts and talents that you are passionate about to use to serve the Lord, to see people come into the kingdom. Evangelize through discovery groups and outreaches. So these are things that we're going to be rolling out in the days ahead um, to, to explain what those look like. And then also train ministry leaders, which we have our BFAM training school as well. So this is the last part. I'm actually almost done. Wow. I'm quite impressed with myself. I've not digressed that much, which is a miracle for all of you who know me and call me squirrel. Yes. Oh, I'm digressing right now. I was just told. Okay, sorry. Okay, so here's the strategy. This is the 10-phase strategy, all right? This is the plan, right? We've come over to the side. We're looking at the map. How are we going to navigate through? Where are we going? What are we doing? So this is it. So this is the 10-phase strategy that I'm going to share with you that we're going to be rolling out in the weeks ahead and months ahead. So number one, establish church house certification and training. Um, so that's going on. That's ongoing. Um, and if you are feeling um, that you prayed and you're like, you know, maybe we are called to, to open a house church. Maybe we are called to do that. Um, you can go to, you can go to, go to the rock.com and click on house churches. You'll find a thing that has house churches. There's tons of information in there for you um, to maybe fill out a form, an interest form or, or whatever. So pray about that. So number one, establish house church certification and training. Number two, launch the BFAM training center, um, which we announced last Sunday. Um, and I think that's, that's already, it's already full steam ahead. The next one is teach the plan. We're doing that right now, by the way, if you're wondering. This is called the plan. Um, and so we're going to be teaching this. And uh, this thing is all going to be, um, like I said, unrolling. And you'll get to be uh, hearing all the excitement and all that God's doing. So um, God's new ministry model and strategy. Number four, launch a fervent prayer campaign. Listen, this is going to be exciting because you know and I know we need to get on our knees for our nation, for our communities. There is so much going on right now that we need to get on our knees and pray. And so we are going to join together and we are going to have an amazing prayer campaign that we will all do. You know, we have a ladies rock group and they are prayer warriors. So I bet right now they're watching going, woohoo! I know you guys are gonna be excited about that even though you're already doing it because you guys are amazing. Debbie Scalise, good job. So. Number five, um, release an effective ministry app. 
So there's going to be an awesome rock app. It's going to have all sorts of ministry tools. Um, it's going to have uh, access to the daily word that Pastor Jerry does every day so that you can continue to grow and hear all the amazing things that he pulls out of the word. Uh, that'll be on there. Um, the reading plan, uh, all sorts of ministry tools and, and help will be on that. So that's coming as well. Then uh, number six is courageously invite people to house churches. So that's going to be um, number six and then seven is open up all campuses with the new model um, and you know what we're believing we're believing for a fresh wind of heaven to come and a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit to come and breathe through and take us to a new and exciting place that God has for us um, the next one, number set, number eight, is launch discovery groups. Again, some of this is already happening, so this is sort of all, you know, kind of simultaneously. And this is, but just so that you know the ten phase strategy of of where we're going and what the plan is. So, number eight, launch discovery groups and outreach everywhere. So we're going to explain a little bit more about that. Discovery groups could be marriage ministry or family or maybe more specific type ministry for different people. Um, and then the next one is number nine is launch city strategies. You know, every city has its own principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that need to be battled. And every city needs to be covered in prayer and pastored. And so there's going to be a strategy for every city and people um, placed in those cities to uh, really uh, just fight the, the battles that are in those specific cities. Um, so that's going to be amazing. So launch city strategies. Um, and then the last one is multiply house churches and discovery groups. So that's the plan. That's where we're going. This was sort of an informational message today. It was sort of a, like I said, let's pull over to the side. We've just walked into Disney. Um, we got we to gotta see where we're going and what's happening. And so that's really this, th this next season is where we're going, what we're doing, how it's going to happen. And so every week you're going to be hearing more about what the plan is. So I had, just want to close with this scripture. It says, he makes the whole body fit together and unites it through the support of every joint. Every joint. Listen, we are the body. There, if You know, there's not really a part of our body that doesn't work. No, God created every part of our body to work together to function properly. You know, when part of the body isn't functioning properly, that's where paralysis comes in. That's where organs shut down. And so, again, if the church isn't functioning together, then we're not going to see a healthy church. And that's not God's plan. And you know what? You are a part of that plan. You are a part of it. It's not just about you coming and sticking your backside on a seat and receiving. You know what? Sometimes we need to do that. That's not wrong. So, you know, no condemnation for those who just need to come and you need to receive and you need to hear, but do it for a bit and then jump in. There is nothing more exciting than being involved in a church that is alive and thriving. It is fun. It is fun to rub shoulders with your brothers and sisters in Christ and to, you know, work together and see God do amazing things. And so it says, um, I'll read that again. It says, he makes the whole body fit together and unites it through the support of every joint. As each and every part does its job, he makes the body grow so it builds itself up in love, in love. That's a powerful scripture, church. And so I want to call you to prayer and call you to um, say, let's do this. I'm on board. Let's jump in and let's go. Let's go and let's go hard. Amen. So I'm going to pray. Um, and then I think Gareth is going to come back up. Um, so let's pray. Lord, I pray that as we roll out the plan of the rock as a whole and all of our campuses, that our spirits and our hearts will leap with excitement for what you have for us as a church, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the vision that you've given our senior pastors, Pastor Jerry and Kimberly. I thank you that you've called them to lead 
um, fiercely. And, and so, Lord, we pray for them and we thank you for them. Lord, I pray for each person to know that they have a part, Lord. No matter how weak, how inexperienced, how timid they feel, how ungodly, Lord, we all can share a part together to see your kingdom come and your will be done, Lord. And so I ask that you lift spirits, that you um, call us, Lord, into a new season. And we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for the days ahead as we unveil this plan that you're sharing with us. And we love you, Lord, with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, So, Gareth, come on up, my birthday boy, and uh, why don't you close the service out? Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Elisa, and uh, what a great message. Uh, The Lord is speaking powerfully, and then we take this week and the coming weeks to just say, Lord, what are you saying now for me? That's what you're declaring to the church. What are you saying for me? And we listen, and then we obey and march forward, and the Lord blesses abundantly. And we are coming into the greatest season, I believe, for the church ever. Bishop Oyudepo, uh, listened to him the other day. And he's um, got the most amazing church in Nigeria in th- that we have. I've actually visited, and I've shared that with the church before, and got this fifty thousand seat building. It is amazing to visit it, and they pack it out five times every Sunday, and that's just that building overflow areas, children's ministry. There are so many people come to this church every Sunday, and he spoke something powerful. It says, I believe we're coming into a season where the greatest influx into the church is coming for this planet. And people are going to run for cover into the churches. So people say church is done, it's all over, you're missing something. You're looking at the news and commenting on the church about what's on the news. You've got to look at the good news and then you know the direction of the church. And you cannot kill the church because it's one with Christ and you can't kill Christ. Amen. He's been crucified, but he's risen. He'll never be killed again, I can tell you. And same with the church. Amen. Let's have a strong amen with that. And listen, this is not a time to be fear-filled. Tune out the fear, by the way. Tune out the fear. Amen. Let's tune in the faith. They're polar opposites. And I can't come near my faith when I'm camping in fear. And I can't come near fear when I'm camping in faith. I want to tell you something just as I close. Listen, this is so key. There is a prayer march coming this Saturday at the Lincoln Memorial that Franklin Graham, I want to get you to check out a website, and it's prayermarch2020.com. And this Saturday is one of the most key, most amazing events and it'll be at 12 p.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, so 9 a.m. this Saturday till 11 a.m. this Saturday, a two-hour prayer march, many believers gathering at the nation's capital in D.C., starting at the Lincoln Memorial, going for 1.8 miles, and marching around D.C. and praying for the nation's capital and for this nation. What an amazing event. You remember when? how many times the Lord... Um, listen to the people's prayers and things changed. My goodness, this is amazing what is about to happen this Saturday. Can I encourage you to pray in advance from now till Saturday for that event and pray during those two hours like you're at that march, praying over the nation's capital, praying over the nation's leaders and praying over our nation. And let's expect this prayer event is going to bust open the things of God and his purposes for this nation and put a halt to the enemy and his plans. United States of America, no weapon shall form no weapon formed against you shall prosper. We really believe that. So isn't that great? Prayermarch2020.com. Pray for Franklin Graham. This is one of the our nation's greatest leaders, son of Billy Graham, and we need to support him in prayer. Cover the whole team. There's a massive logistical program happening to make this event happen. So let's pray over that. Thank you for joining us today. We love you very much. And thank you, Elisa, for sharing that great message. And thank you for those birthday wishes. They're greatly appreciated. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll see you Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Make sure you email us if you have not got 
our e-blast happening, our email, email sealbeach at solidlives.com and we'll put you on the list and then you'll get our updates but also the Zoom link for 7 p.m. If you're part of our church and you really want to be part of that meeting, we'd love to have you. See you then, 7 p.m., but also see you next week. Uh, God bless you. Bye for now.